Hello and welcome to VTU e Sectional Learning Platform. In this video, we will continue to discuss regarding say data link control protocols. So, especially in this uh, video, we will talk regarding stop and wait protocol and point to point protocol or sometimes it is also referred as a PPP protocol. Stop and wait protocol is a more realistic protocol compared to that of simple protocol. Simple protocol is more of a hypothetical in nature where we assumed that channel is error free, there is no need of flow control. Okay. So, these two functions we have not added in a simple protocol. Now, stop and wait is you can call it as an extension of a simple where it will take care regarding both flow as well as error control issues. Okay. So, that is the reason we call it as more realistic or so more practical kind of a protocol. In this protocol, okay, so for analysis reason, the job of a one entity which sends the frame to the receiver, we call it as a sender and job of a receiver is to send back an acknowledgement to the sender, okay, depending on uh, to intimate regarding the status of the frame. Okay, so the concept of acknowledgement is used. Now, to inculcate or to add that error control say ability to the protocol, the idea of adding a redundancy is used. So, that additional redundancy bits that are needed for detection of error is done with the help of CRC, cyclic redundancy check that CRC feed which is provided here which helps to detect an error. So, normally this CRC will going to be the part of say trailer. Okay. So, CRC is obtained by performing a calculation on the frame. Okay. So, we obtain certain redundancy bits. So, those redundancy bits will going to be a part of the trailer which helps the receiver to detect an error. Now, to understand how exactly a stop and wait functions. Okay we need to know the FSN. Before going to a FSN, first we will see the way in which the whole activity of stop and wait happens. Okay. Now, the sender, okay, the sender, it gets the data from network layer. Okay. Once it gets the data from the network layer, it prepares the frame, see, it makes the frame and it sends the frame to the receiver. Now, see the activity of making a frame also involves adding a header to it, which includes the address of receiver, okay, receiver node as well as sender's address. So, these are the two informations which will going to be a part of this header, okay, apart from other control informations, which was already discussed in the previous video. So, this, these two informations are part of this header, which which will be helpful for making the frame to sail towards the receiver. Now, as soon as receiver gets this frame, so based on the sender's address, it sends an acknowledgement. So, the sender's address is necessary here to send back an acknowledgement to the sender to intimate regarding the status of the frame that is issued. Now, once it makes the frame, okay. After sending the frame, it sets the timer. The purpose of timer is to keep a track of acknowledgement. Purpose of a timer is to keep a track of an acknowledgement. So, moment the frame leaves the sender, timer will be started. So, this timer will count up to 2 TP times. Okay two times the propagation which you which we also call it as round trip time RTT. Okay. So, this TP means propagation time, time needed to make a frame to move from sending side to the receiving side. Okay. So, from sender to a receiver the time that is needed that we call it as TP. Okay. So, two TP means it is total round trip time, the time needed to say reach this frame over here and time that is needed to get back an acknowledgement if I ignore the processing time of the frame. If I ignore the processing time of the frame, so
so then RTT will go to become 2TP or otherwise it will be slightly more than 2TP. So, this timer is set to this value, round trip time value, okay. So, this timer counts up to RTT, okay. Moment say timer gets reset or say it reaches RTT value, again it will start counting from, uh, it, it reaches the 0, that means it indicates the timeout. Moment a timeout occurs, okay, the copy of the frame which is previously sent will be resent. So, that means for this particular activity, we need a facility to keep a copy of the sent frame, okay. For that, there will be a buffer provided at a senders, okay. So, buffer provided at a sender for keeping the copy of the sent frame, okay. It is meant to hold the copy of the sent frame. See how exactly uh, this copy will be useful. Basically, this idea of timer helps us to take care regarding the errors, okay. Now, whenever some frame is sent, okay. When it reaches over here, okay, if receiver detects an error in the received frame, it simply discards this frame. If it discards this frame, discarding of a frame means, say it is as good as not receiving of a frame at a receiving set. So, if it does not receive any frame, it does not send an acknowledgement. So, that means acknowledgement will not going to come back in a round trip time. So, timer hits a 0. Once timeout occurs, it will resend the same frame. So, this is how it takes care regarding errors. If any error is noticed, the correction will go to be done by the sender only by resending the same frame, okay. So, the CRC is meant for detection of error over here. Now, the sender will not going to send the next frame until it receives the acknowledgement for the previously sent frame. This activity of say sending a new frame after getting an acknowledgement helps us to control the flow, okay. So, if the receiver is fast enough to consume the frames, it will send back the acknowledgement immediately. In case if it is slow in consuming the frames, the acknowledgements will come bit late, okay. Depending on that, the next packet will going to be sent. So, this acknowledgement idea is providing say tool to control both flow as well as error. Now, look at the activities that are happening here and what are the possible states of sender and the receiver, okay. Now, to understand the possible states of sender and receiver, we will first discuss regarding the flow diagram. We will first discuss regarding this flow diagram, okay. Then we see how exactly the state of sender, what exactly the state of the sender process, what are the different states of the sender process and what are the states of the receiver process, okay. So once we know regarding that, it is easy for us to draw the FSM, okay. To start with, we will see that you know that the activity you notice here, that is packet will going to be delivered by the network layer to the data link layer. So, this is, these two are the layers, the network layer is the one which is sitting above the data link layer, this is the one which is sending the frame to it, well, I mean packet to it. Once the data link layer gets the packet, it prepares the frame, it makes the frame, keeps the copy of the frame, sets the timer and sends the frame, okay. So, it sets the timer and sends the frame. We will assume that this particular frame which is sent by the sender reaches the receiver without any errors, okay. So, moment it comes over here, receiver checks it for the error, okay. So, it does not have any error, it extracts the data out of the frame that is packet and delivers it to the network layer. So, when this activity is happening, simultaneously link layer sends an acknowledgement back to the sender. Okay. So, this we will assume that this acknowledgement arrives at a sender before timeout occurs, before timeout occurs. So, that means this communication is totally complete. So, once this gets over, 
Now, the data link layer process is ready to accept the next packet. Now, see to perform while performing this operation, if any data that comes from the network layer will not going to be accepted. Say moment it sends it, okay. So, that means it is going into the blocking state, data link layer process is going into the blocking state, it is not accepting anything from the network layer, okay. So, it is in the blocking state, so it sends moment it gets an acknowledgement back to it. So, the conclusion is what? Conclusion is that it received the, uh, uh, the frame has reached the destination with say without any errors, then it will going to accept the next frames from the network layer, okay. So, that means now it moves out of the blocking state to a ready state, okay. When it is in a ready state, it accepts the packet. Again, it will do the same thing, prepares the frame, sends it, okay. Now, we will assume a situation of losing of packets. This is one of the possibility that, ha that may happen on communication channel, okay. So, we are talking of this situation, how exactly our stop and wait will react with the help of this timer. So, moment the frame leaves out of this data link layer, the activity is what I have discussed, say during this uh, explanation, the same thing will go to takes place over here. That is, keeps the copy of the frame, sets the timer, sends the frame, okay. So, we will assume that this frame is lost. If this frame is lost means anyway, the frame is not reaching over here, no question of bothered regarding say that error detection, okay, no question of sending a acknowledgement because nothing has arrived at it. So, that means it will not send back an acknowledgement, okay. So, automatically timeout occurs, same copy of the frame will going to be resent, okay. Now, see this I am talking regarding the situation of losing of frames in a stop and wait protocol. And when this happens, again the timeout concept helps us to get rescued from this situation. The same frame is sent and we will assume that this is reached safely like the this particular frame and data is extracted out of it, acknowledgement is sent back before the timeout occurs. So, that means that communication is now complete. Now, see when we talk about the situation where the loss of frame, okay and how exactly the action or the care is taken for the losing of frames. Next situation, we will talk regarding losing of acknowledgements, losing of acknowledgement. So, this is a situation where the frame has reached properly to the destination and data is extracted and for that the receiver has already sent an acknowledgement and that acknowledgement is lost and see. The acknowledgement is also somewhat similar to the, the data frame, maybe its size is smaller compared to the data frame, but it is also the same as that of the data frame. It is there is a possibility that acknowledgement will going to be lost during the transmission because the channel is not error free for acknowledgement also, yes. So, the question there is a possibility that acknowledgement may get say it will be lost in the uh, say channels. So, for that the action taken is somewhat similar because this acknowledgement does not come back to the sender means the conclusion from the sender's point of view is that the previous frame has not reached the properly, okay. What sender will do? Again, the co same copy which was say kept while sending this particular frame will be resent keeping uh, say assuming that that particular frame is lost, same frame is sent. But the situation you see from the receiver's point of view, receiver has already received this frame, receiver has already received this particular frame with this uh, value sequence number, but same frame is arriving over here, what exactly the receiver will do for this thing, okay. Now to understand to this particular situation, we should know regarding the sequence number. So while discussing some of these things, you see we have added some number to it. Okay, for in front of every frame, we have added some number which is indicating the sequence number of the frame. Okay, now the receiver keeps this track of sequence number which helps it to helps it to identify whether it is a duplicate frame or not. With the help of this sequence number, it will come to know 
that this is a duplicate frame okay rather than extracting the data out of this frame what it will do simply ignores this frame because already it has delivered the data from that frame to the higher layer it will resend the acknowledgement back it will resend the acknowledgement back for the same frame now look at the idea used over here to deal with these type of a situations duplicate frames okay normally the receiver the job of a receiver is to keep the track of the next expected frame so that is the reason why the acknowledgement is talking regarding acknowledgement 1 so this means that receiver is waiting for the frame next frame is 1 okay already frame 0 is reached, reached properly but it is waiting for frame 1 so that means this is what is the packet which will go to be tracked by data link layer so it is waiting for this sequence number if any packet comes other than this sequence number will going to be rejected will be rejected now see here already frame 0 is reached over here acknowledgement sent is what 1 so it is expecting the next frame with the sequence number 1 so if it does not arrives at it yes if it does not arrives at it the conclusion is what conclusion is something has gone wrong okay so what it will do it will again repeat the thing what it has said over here that is it sends a acknowledgement one indicating to the sender that it is waiting for the frame with sequence number one okay so this is how the whole activity of stop and wait happens now look at the possible states of receiver when you look at the task that receiver performs okay only possible state of a receiver is ready state all the time it has to be in a ready state okay all the time it has to be in a ready state okay so possible situations that may occur at a receiver is one is it may get a frame with corrupt values the second possibility is get the frame with everything fine okay so frame with errors frame without errors these are the two possibilities that may happen at a receiving side fine so that may happen at a receiving side now possible states of the sender say initially it will be ready state during say when it is waiting for the data from the network layer it is a ready state okay that i will want to call it as ready state then once it sends a frame while it is waiting for an acknowledgement it is blocking state it is a blocking state okay so b is blocking state r is ready state so these are the possible states of the sender process okay now we'll see what are the say possible events that makes this protocol to change the state okay so we'll see to it first the sending process finite state machine representation as i said it has two possible states one is ready another is blocking state so whenever it is in a ready state so arrival of a packet it is waiting for this particular event to occur okay so this is the only event that makes the sender process to change its state from ready to blocking state that is the event of arrival of a packet from network layer once a packet comes to it it prepares the frame okay saves the copy send a frame start the timer these are the events it will do okay so the once these are the actions which are performed by the sending process for this particular event it sends the frame and state of the process gets changed from ready to blocking state so while after performing these tasks okay after performing these tasks it will go to the blocking state okay in this blocking state the possible events that can make it to change the state or stay in the same state are mentioned over here the possible event that makes it to change from blocking to ready state is error free acknowledgement arrival the arrival see i mean i mean i mean to say the arrival of packet without errors okay is an event 
makes it to cha change its state. Okay. So, if uh, the acknowledgement comes with without any errors, that is the state, uh, that is an event which makes it to change the state from blocking to ready state. So, in a blocking state, it is waiting for an acknowledgement that has to come from the receiver. If that acknowledgement comes without error, okay, so it stops the timer, it discards the copy of the frame that is kept and comes back to a ready state. And what are the possible events that makes it to stay in the same state is timeout. Okay, if acknowledgement does not come within the timeout period, it will resend the same frame. So, in a blocking state, it is waiting for an acknowledgement. If it does not receives it, it is a timeout, resend the same frame, start the same timer again, okay, send again, wait for acknowledgement. So, this it will stay in this state till it gets an acknowledgement of this kind, which is not having any errors. And third possible event is that arrival of acknowledgement with errors. That is also possible, okay, because you see in the previous case, there is a possibility that we may get an acknowledgement with errors. We may get an, in this uh, flow diagram, I have not shown it, but there is a possibility that acknowledgement may also come with errors, okay. So, the treatment for arrival of acknowledgement with some errors is same as that of, say, discarding it. Okay, it is as good as non-reception of acknowledgement. Okay, so it is as good as no receiving of acknowledgement. For that also, it will stay back in a blocking state by discarding the acknowledgement. If it discards an acknowledgement, okay, the actions you see. So once it discards, if it comes with a uh, errors, it discards it and again keeps quiet. So keeping quiet in a blocking state means again this event will occur. Okay discarding of acknowledgement lead to a this event to occur and then again once a timeout occurs resending of frames waiting for starting of a timer waiting for a acknowledgement okay these two are interrelated corrupt event discarded keep quiet okay automatically timeout occurs same actions of sending same copy of the frame starting of frame uh, timer all those actions happen now this is what is the possible two possible states of the sender. Now we will talk regarding the receiver. See, it is only a receiver process state. Now the possibilities that happens at a receiving side is the frame has to go with without error. Okay. So frame arrives at a receiver without error. Okay. Uh, I mean sorry, error free frame, error free frame, arrival of a frame without errors. If a frame arrives without error, extract the data, deliver it to the network layer, yes, send an acknowledgement, again stay back in the ready state. The second possible events that may occur at a receiving side is arrival of a frame with errors. So for that, discard the frame, keep quiet, discard the frame, keep quiet, stay in a ready state. So all the time, receiver is in ready state to accept the data, yes. So this is how we represented, represent a, this uh, stop and wait protocol in the form of FSM, okay. Now in this whole discussion you see, in this whole discussion, yes, so I have not talked regarding the data that is moving back from the receiving side, okay. So for understanding reason to keep uh, say things simple, what we did is Say we have taken a one way communication, okay, only the data is moving from sending side to the receiving side. But normally in network, both the entities they exchange the data, data moves from both, both the sides, okay. So for that reason, okay, to handle these type of situations, we talk of using piggybacking concept. Piggybacking is an idea of say hooking the acknowledgement to the data frame, okay, adding a acknowledgement to the data frame. Basically, the acknowledgement frame, normally it will not only sent alone, it will be 
say always with the part of the data that is moving back from the receiving side to the sending side. But it is not a hard and fast rule, okay. If receiver does not have anything to send to the sender, okay, then there is no say uh, way to hold this acknowledgement. You need to send back an acknowledgement within the timeout period. The receiver has to send back an acknowledgement within the timeout period. So there is no question of holding the acknowledgement say infinite time, okay, or till the receiver gets ready with the data. The piggybacking idea is to utilize the channel uh, uh, in a better way, okay. So normally the acknowledgement will go to be hooked with the data frame that is moving from a receiving side to the sending side, okay. So basically this piggybacking idea will be used when there is a two way communication, okay. So that means both sender and receiver are exchanging the data in both the directions, okay. So this is what is an idea regarding a piggybacking. Last word about this stop and wait is sequence number. Stop and wait uses the sequence numbers with, uh, okay, only two possible sequence numbers in the stop and wait, that is frame 0, okay, one sequence number is 0 and 1. So the length of the sequence number is only 1 bit, okay, it is 1 bit sequence number, either it will be 0 or 1, okay. This 1 bit sequence number is more than sufficient to handle the situation in stop and wait. The main reason is, see, when it is, when it sends, we do not need a larger space for representing the sequence number. We need only 1 bit value to add the sequence number, okay. When it sends a frame 0, okay, it is waiting for that particular frame, it accepts it and it sends an acknowledgement for frame 1, that means it is waiting for frame 1, okay. Now moment it extracts the data out of this frame 0, it releases the sequence number, that means it can be reused, it can be reused. There is no question of say getting back a say same duplicate sequence number. To demonstrate that only we have used this situation where same sequence number is arriving twice but it will not going to accept, okay. So sequence number with only one bit is enough to handle the situation in stop and wait protocol, okay. Next we talk regarding point to point protocol which is one of the most common protocols, okay, which is meant for say accessing the internet, okay. Basically this is what is the protocol which we talk, okay, which we talk of say which is used for uh, accessing the internet, okay. Its job is to control, manage, transfer of a data, okay. And with the help of this, the user can access the service provider's machine. Basically, at a data link layer, the PPP is say one which is used to connect the user's machine to the service provider's machine, okay. Now we will go to we will discuss the details of this protocols, okay. Now what are the different types of services, okay. It provides, basically it is designed to provide a several services, okay. But say certain traditional services are ignored to keep it simple. The main idea is to make this a simple protocol, okay. So for that reason, not all the services are added to it, especially when it comes to a flow control and a error control. So we will go to see the details of it in the later part, okay. So those services, especially that flow control and did, uh, especially that flow control is not addressed, say, in this PPP, okay. It is mainly to keep it simple, okay. To keep it simple, that flow control issue has been eliminated from the PPP, okay. Now, PPP is basically of the type character oriented protocol or sometimes we call it as a byte oriented. Character oriented and byte oriented are same, okay. So 
basically everything in the data part will be treated as a character okay we are already discussed regarding the same in our first video now we'll see the first the frame format of ppp how exactly the frame of this ppp looks like okay so in the pre uh, the to start with when we talk about the frame when we uh, talk of representation of the frame initially there will be a flags two flags which are helping us to identify the boundaries of the frames then comes the header part which includes three information one is address another is control information third is protocol now this ppp allows the address of the size one byte normally the address that is fed in this ppp is 11111 okay in previous discussion and all i used to talk regarding sender's address receiver's address and all those things but here i am talking regarding an address which is of the type 11111 which says that it is a broadcast address it is a broadcast address okay next is the control information basically this control feed it is been say set to 00000011 okay so mainly it does not provide any flow control and the error control is also say in the limited way okay especially it is only limited to detection of errors next this ppp supports multiple protocols okay for that reason this protocol feed is added normally when we talk about the network layer so we expect the data link layer to provide a service to a ip protocol ip is the protocol that part of a network so we expect that but say this ppp is not only supporting the ip it is also supporting some different protocols apart from ip okay so to add so actually it is serving which protocol to rep represent that to say mention regarding that this protocol feed has been provided okay protocol feed is to specify to which protocol exactly it is providing a services its length is variable it is between 1 byte to 2 bytes normally default value is 2 bytes long protocol default value is 2 bytes long depending on the situations we change it uh, during a negotiation it will be changed okay next part is payload part so payload part is meant for carrying a 1500 bytes it is meant to carry a 1500 bytes okay so that is say maximum value what it can carry it is variable in size okay it is not mandatory that every time it has to carry a 1500 bytes that is the reason we are using the flags to identify the boundaries of the frames it is a variable sized frames okay the maximum data what it can carry is 1500 the maximum length of this payload is 1500 bytes next is uh, this uh, payload it includes the data that comes from the network layer so normally in the previous discussion and all i used to say packet packet will going to be dumped in this payload part or it will carry this payload carries the packet that comes from the higher layer next is fcs basically this is frame check sequence fcs indicates its length is 2 to 4 bytes long okay so it depends on say what type of a standard crc we are using based on that the length is varying to either it will be 2 or 4 basically it is to add a redundancy to this frame which will be useful for detection of error at a receiving side so these are different fields of ppp now we'll see the transition phases of ppp which is represented in the form of fsm okay different phase, phases of ppp how exactly uh, in which all the phases it will be before uh, say allowing a users machine to be get connected to the service providers machine the situation is the user machine wants to be get connected with the service providers machine okay so 
before getting connected to the service provider's machine, it, it will be in which all the states, once it get, get connected, what happens, okay, all those things are say represented in this transition, different transition phases or which you can call it as FSM of PPP. So, initially it is in a dead state, okay. So, during this time, there is no active carrier, okay. There is no active carrier and line is quiet. Now, when one of the say machine, uh, one of the say device, especially it may be a sender or receiver, one who initiates the communication, okay. So, once a connection, uh, say uh, act, uh, the action for say connection uh, starts, okay, it will move from dead state to a uh, established state, but once that action starts, the carrier gets detected, carrier gets detected. Now, to move from say dead state for uh, going for a, uh, uh, to get connected with a service provider's machine, it has to move from dead state to a established state. So, for during that time, what we are expecting is, what is expected is the carrier it is required to be detected. In case if carrier is not detected, it is as good as say uh, failing of establishment task, okay. No question of connection get established without the support of carrier. If there is no carrier, it indicates that there is some fault in the line, okay. So, no question of getting connected to the server, okay or other machine. So, if carrier is detected, then only it is possible for the say PPP to move from dead state to a established state, okay. Now, in the established state, that negotiation, okay, two parties happens, okay. If two parties agrees, need, need for an authentication, this is optional state, okay. If they agree for a authentication, it passes through this or otherwise, this state may be skipped, okay. Now, anyway, for understanding reason, we will consider this, okay. So, during this option negotiation, authentication will be verified. If authentication is fine, then it moves to a next state, okay. Otherwise, if authentication fails, it will move to a terminate state. From terminate state, it will go going back to a dead state. In case, if authentication is failed, if authentication is through, okay, it will move to a network state. Okay. So, in this network state, uh, basically say they, they can start a communication from this state. Okay. So, certain configurations will be done based on that, then it moves from the network state to a open state. So, during this state, data transfer takes place between both the machines. Okay. Actually, it is a data transfer state. From then, it moves to a terminate state. Once a data transfer gets over, okay, it moves from open state to a terminate state. So, that means, now they are agreed to close the communication. Uh, once it is enters the terminate state, from there the carrier gets dropped, again it comes back to a dead state. So, these are say a possible six states of PPP, starts with dead, establish authentication state is optional. Next is network state. If everything is fine over here, from establish it will move to a network state, okay. Once the network layer configuration is complete, then it is capable of transferring the data, okay, in the open state. Then once the data transfer gets over, it moves to a terminate state. From terminate state, it will come back to a dead state. These are a possible uh, states of PPP. This is all about PPP, okay. And it is as it was told to you at the beginning, PPP is byte oriented protocol or a character oriented protocol. So, when we talk about the flag, flag is of the type, say this one, even though this is what is a bit pattern that is used to use for the flag. Okay, this is what is 
uh, 8 bit pattern that is used for the flag okay so this is all about ppp so this uh, ends the discussion regarding dlc services in the next video we will going to talk regarding access control techniques of data link layer okay thank you very much we'll see you in the net next video